Hi, welcome to Dog Tricks of the Trade. You're back here at k and Springers, and I'm Deb Kirk, and I'm going to walk everybody through the equipment today. I had a phone call from one of my clients this morning. He's been watching all the, all the videos, and he bought the Andes, which is my preference, but there's about three really good companies, Oster Andes, that make this equipment. Uh, I, per, I prefer the Andes, it just fits my hand better. The Osters are much heavier and they're wider. I use them for years and years and years, then I switch over to the Andes. I couldn't be happier with this. It's a work hog. I mean, I wear it out, wear it out. It's got two speeds, which I love. All right, so here was the problem that he had this morning. And since I've got that in my hand, we might as well start with that first. And yay, I can't even get into my little pack here. I need a YouTube on how to get into my Stanleys. And I think I'll pick this one. Alright, so as you may or may not know, these are called detachable blades. Whenever you buy them, whenever anybody talks about them, it's detachable this, detachable that. All right, so here's your detachable blade. Now, when he called me this morning, his Andes looked like this. And no matter what I told him on FaceTime, I couldn't make him understand that this little hook right here had to be standing straight up into the air. So I came out to the grooming shop, I got mine. I always have this little set of um, Stanley tools around because it fits all the different screws of my Dremel when I'm putting Dremel tops on and how I get in here and I clean this. So I like these. So what you're going to do here is you're going to go right at the bottom of this latch and you're just going to put it in there and pop it up. It's not easy. And of course it's not working for me. Okay, I had the Phillips head. So here's the straight one there. Now, see how that's popped up. So it was down. I can't even get it to go down. And you just take a little Phillips head screwdriver into there and you pop it up. Pop it up. Now, after you have that up, then you can see all these detachable blades have this little pocket right here. And that little pocket fits, slides right on top there. Then you snap it shut. I don't have it turned on. I usually turn it on to make sure that it's tight. If it's not tight, you can pop it off, put it back on again, let it run. There's also this mechanism on a lot of the Andes. This actually helps you if you push this and then pop it off and you push that and you pop it on and then release it. That's what that release bar is for. And it would probably be in the best interest of the clipper to do that. A lot of times I don't. I just kind of pop them on, pop them off. This is ancient. This is probably going on 10 years old too. So as you use them, they get easier to handle. So I'm going to push that up, pull it off. That little lip has to be up. And then I can take, here's my nine blade, same thing. There's the detachable. And that little pocket on that blade just slides right in on top of that. Then I am going to press this. I'm going to push it forward, turn it on, because that would be the indicator that the yes, that's nice and tight. So that, that was a simple fix. And do try to use your flathead screwdriver and not the Phillips, but trust me, these things are so tiny, it's hard for me to see. So there I've got my little handy toolkit. Now, 
The next thing we're going to do is the wall clipper. Next thing we're going to do is the wall clipper. So I'm pretty tight in here because I have got equipment on both tables. I'm smashed in here. This is your cordless one, of course. So the battery just slides in and out. There's no push buttons to it. It just comes in, out. Whenever you're not using this clipper, it should be on the charger. I have the charger right back here. You can see my extension cord, and I just plug it right in. So if I'm not using it, it is on the charger. The battery is going to die on this before the clipper will. And you can buy additional batteries, which is good. Now, this is a whole different kind of blade. Now, this one just pops on and off. So there is, it almost seems like there's no way for this clipper to be held. So this is the only blade that it is because this blade has this small mechanism here that as you turn it, as you turn this, the teeth go up and back. Yeah, the teeth are going up and back. So you can set it at about five different lengths. When I say I use the shortest setting to do like the pads of the feet, that would be the shortest. All the way down is not quite a nine blade. It's a little bit shorter than a nine blade, but somewhere in between is where I like to do like schnauzer ears and kind of detailed work. So that's why I like this clipper. Doesn't matter. So here you have the clipper. Here you have the blade. Put it on top where you feel like it should be. And then it really just snaps on. I just heard it snap. Now this one I am going to try. Now, you hear that sound? Not a good sound. That means that that blade is not well fit on there. I had a boo-boo last week and I dropped this on the floor and when I put that blade back on, now that blade still cuts, but I've got a fool with that blade. Something went out of whack with it when it fell on the floor. So there, I have the exact same blade again. Now I put that one on. Now that is the sound that you want to listen to. Here's my mic. That is the sound that you want to listen to when this blade is on correctly. And as it's moving, you can adjust it to the different to the different lengths, which is also another thing I like. So that is how you work that blade. It just pops on and off. Just on and off and you're done. Of course when I'm doing this there. That's it. So that is your wah. Your Dremel, of course we all know Dremels. Same thing, when you're not using your Dremel and this is the 7700. 7700. I like cordless equipment when I'm working around the pads and the feet of the dogs. Please, it doesn't cost you any more money and it's so nice, but when you're not using it, keep this in its charger. Again, the battery's going to go out before the Dremel does. And now the batteries on these are about the same cost as buying a whole nother Dremel. So that simply just goes in there, snaps in there. So you can try it either direction till you get it to go in. There. I mean, I did that monkeyed around on purpose. But there it is. And then it has the two lengths. Now this one's a little... This one's been used. So if you notice, when I turned it on, I had to... I had to tap it on. Make sure that's in there nice and tight. So that's how we use those. To get these caps on is not easy. But let me just tell you, see the blue button here? Make sure you press that blue button. Then this is all still. And then you take the screw off the top. That's why I have that little Stanley kit. And you take it off and you make it shine. And then you put the top on. It does come with good directions. There are tons of how-tos on YouTube, so I don't need to go into all that. But I always forget to push this blue button. So I'm struggling here with the thing that keeps going around and around and around. So there's your Dremel. The slicker that I recommend above all others, and I've tried them all, is the Miller's Forge. And this is the large size. It's a very soft slicker. It does last. It's a really good slicker. It's fairly good cost. 
not expensive. All, everything I'm showing you today, if you're on a laptop or you're on a computer, go below and you'll see links to every one of these items and you could just push it and it'll punch you into Amazon or whatever site I felt. I try to do Amazon because Amazon is easy. It brings it right to your door in two days. Most people have Prime. It's easy for people to shop off of. So when Amazon carries this, that is what the link I'll have below. Please just go under there. Boom, 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 boom. The prices are no different. You'll see it's going to pop you right into your Amazon account. So this is a Miller's Forge. It's a large. It's extremely soft when you run it over your hand. So if you have a slicker at home that you've been using, go like this. And if it hurts, I have so many pet people come to me. Oh, Fifi doesn't like to get groomed. I said, bring all your equipment with Fifi, whatever you're using. I pull out the slicker. I go like this, and it hurts. Those things that PetSmart and Petco that they sell you, it, are, it left marks on my hand. I said, no wonder. I said, then I go like this in the palm of their hand. They go, oh, big difference. So this is a Miller's slicker brush, large. I love it. And because I'm at dog shows and I have other people here at the shop, I always put my initials and everything. All right, now, this is important. This is really good for your, this is Andy's Blade Care. And what this is, and you can see it's all yucky because I use it. Okay. It's actually a blade oil slash wash. I'm not going to tilt it because I'll probably fall on the floor. But what I do with the clipper on, with the blade on, I actually dip just the top part of the clipper and blade into there after I'm done using it at the end of the day because I, you don't want to go from that back to your dog. It is yucky. Um, I will turn on my clipper and show you how I do that here in just a minute since I think that that's probably important. And we've seen all the blades, all the different blades. Here is the seven for the top coat for the summer. Here is the five. Here is the four, and they all snap onto the detachable clippers the same way. All of these are interchangeable, all these companies. It's about four companies that make these detachable blades. There's three companies that make the really good dog grooming clippers. Don't make the mistake of walking into Sally's and getting, oh, there's Debbie's Oster or Andy's. No. The, the, the people equipment is made entirely different than the dog equipment, so it doesn't cross over. So make sure that you are going to the pet industry. Again, I have all of these. Just scroll down below this, and I'll have a, a connection to each one of these on that side. I went in there and studied them. I know, I know the steel that I like to use, and I looked at the prices. So I really did give you the best bang for your buck. So that is that if you have to have a toenail clipper. And again, we've gone over shortening toenails. I must have four different videos up on that. If you're consistent, you will never, ever, ever have to use this. But as a pet groomer, I have dogs come in that maybe come in once every six months. I don't do those anymore, but still they come in and they have a significant white at the end of the nail, a lot of nail in front of that quick. And I would suggest that you take that off, obviously not up to the quick, just take that, that off, and then use the Dremel. Otherwise, you'll be standing there forever. But on a show dog, you shouldn't ever use this because since they're baby, baby, babies, they should be up on the table, getting used to the Dremel and just having the Dremel for the rest of their life. My two bitches are 12 years old. That's all they've ever had. That They wouldn't even know what this is. All right. So we have that. We know how to use the Dremel. Okay. Boar's hair brush. I did find one on Amazon last night that looked really nice. So that will also be checked below, and this is a must for the dog show people. Whether you have a liver, black, or tricolor, it doesn't matter. When you're doing your finishing top coat work, ringside, and I have all that on my videos, that is up. You're going to need one of these. They are fabulous. There's nothing to know about it. I just leave it right in my tack box, which I'll swing all this around in a minute and show you the tack box. <coughs> I've talked about um, scissors before. Now, I, I honestly really do use these Con Air single blade shears. And of course, I don't have one out. Let me walk over here for a second and grab one that I have out. Okay, there it is. Single. I, I, I would never recommend a double for any reason. 
that they just take off way too much hair and there isn't a breed ever and I do all breeds that I've ever had to use that for so single blade this is a wonderful I can't find it right now so I don't know what's happening um, I think I got like the last package normally I don't buy the two pack because I use this for paper that's not really good for hair but there it is and on Amazon it usually runs about ten dollars and mine will last six months around here and I'm doing thick heavy woolly coats and when it gets dull I throw it away and open up a new one that is my favorite thinning shear of all time now I did find another interesting one on Amazon last night I ordered it for myself I read it it looked good uh, it had German or Japanese steel which is always a plus I did order it I'm gonna try it and then I'll be back and tell you on another grooming on another grooming tape whether I loved it or not and but I am linking that below just in case you can't find these now grooming tables are a must you're just gonna have to eat it okay you're just gonna have to put out some dollars for yourself as a nice Christmas present or gift and buy yourself a grooming table I'm gonna swing you around here in a minute the nice thing about most of these tables you can buy them all as a set with the arm the clamp and then if you look underneath the grooming table here and here okay, that allows you to collapse the grooming table and put it away in a closet or put it in your car or your van and take it to the dog show so that is a must and again I'll have a link to that and a lot of these setups only run about a hundred dollars so, but it's something, it's an investment you'll have for the rest of your life, whether you have one dog or whether you continue to have dogs, one right after the other, right after the other. I'd say most of my, most of my grooming equipment, 10, 20, 30 years. So, then the noose. I hate the word noose, but we use noose. You're not going to have the dog strangled up with it. I've shown you in all my grooming tapes that the dog is just standing there, and this is fairly loose around its neck. It gives the dog balance balance and that's what you want I particularly like this style because if you look at it okay it snaps here and then I can let the dog be loose off the table you don't have to take it up over their heads this is your normal one and if it were on the dog if it were on the dog the way to get it off of course you would loosen it and then it would come up over their head well especially with pets not so much the show dogs it kind of doesn't matter one way or the other although if I have a show dog up on the table and it's all done up and it's got an ear wraps in and then I'm having to take this noose off uh, no okay I really really do prefer here's the dog in this it's still from above I'm going to do this and then the dog's just loose the other thing about pets, if you get a scrambly pet that's not used to being groomed and they are being wrestling with you and they do want to come off the table, you can instantly unsnap them and have them come off the table rather than jump or fall off the table with that permanent noose in and then the whole table goes falling on the ground. That has happened to everybody. So if you're a pet groomer, this style is a must. If you're just a single dog owner or a show person, it doesn't matter. But this is just what I'm used to and I really do like it so there's your noose nooses nooses but they come these guys come in all shapes all sizes oh my dog's rosy so you can get little roses um, next year for those of you guys that are coming to my dog show on Sunday I have a whole set of these two two and two for best of breed best of winners best of opposite and it's all Celtic stuff it's green lucky charms and little elves and all the stuff that goes with the with the Celtic celebration so I thought that that would be cute so they come in all different shapes sizes colors to match everything now I know I've mentioned this before but I did want to draw it up to your attention okay again this is something that show people do or if you have a grooming shop go ahead and get yourself the smocks I like to wear these around here for obvious reasons it's got an empty back and it's very comfortable at dog shows you will want something long sleeve because you're going to have your pretty dog show clothes on and you're just going to want to protect all your clothes and just go to the little embroiders 
all the dog shows have them, and go through their books and they'll put little Molly's name on it or your, your logo for K&D. There's K&D for me. Same thing here with the towels. Whether you're a dog show person or not. I got these at Land's End. I love Land's End. And then I had this embroidered. So even in my grooming shop, when I leave for the day, I have these towels over my grooming shop. So when I come in in the morning, or I have guests come over, we walk in and it looks beautiful. Why not? Makes you happy, makes you cheery. So let's see what else we've got here. I do want to show you the blade stuff. Oh, even with the Dremel, once in a blue moon, you can get too short on your toenails, once in a blue moon. So um, when that happens, I would have Quick Stop is my favorite. I have bought four or five different brands. I always go back to Quick Stop. Another thing, if you watch my, my video on food, the probiotic that I use is a powder. And here's a trick. Anything that's in a powder, you take a cotton ball and put it in. And then it will stay powdery forever. If I didn't have a cotton ball in here, the next time I went to use it, it would be solid as a rock and I'd be sitting there with a screwdriver trying to break it apart. I've done that too many times. So now I've just learned over the years, just keep a cotton ball in it. If you do bust open the front of one toenail and, it, and it's bleeding, not just a little bit, I just take my finger, I take this, I press it up against, I count five to ten, and it stops it. I wouldn't then immediately put your dog in the bathtub because anytime you put cold water or any kind of water on a cut, it starts to bleed again. So I usually put them in the crate, give them a little rest. Right, buck, 99 cent sale, wherever you want to pick them up. And make sure they're cotton and not the synthetic cosmetics. I did that once and I had to throw them away. They were awful. It's really got to be 100% cotton. And rather than digging it out of the bag, I've had this forever since before I moved in here and I've been here for 25, 76 years. So I just, I keep them here. They go like that. If I want to lock them, I do. But then they're handy. They're right there. And when I do put the ear cleaner on them, now is the time to go out and buy these. I just bought two. Summer, go to your grocery store. And this is condiments for like mustard and ketchup when you go picnicking. That's what this is. I just bought another two pack. So what I do is I, cut the, I get the large cotton balls. I take them in half. I just get them a little wet. And then that, you only go as far as you can see in the ear canal. Only as far as you can see. You never take any instruments and go down there poking around. You'd be surprised how close that eardrum is up to the surface. You don't want to do that. And I absolutely, positively, highly recommend that you do buy a real ear cleaner product. Don't put anything in water. People use peroxide or alcohol. Well, I mean, what if the dog's been doing this in the morning and it's broken open the skin? The alcohol's going to like sting. Peroxide does have some water to it. Buy an ear cleaner that has a base that isn't going to put those kinds of things down into the dog's ear canal, but does clean it. So I get a whole gallon and I just keep filling this back up and uh, it's, it's, uh, I've had that for at least two years. So that lasts forever. Everybody should just have a sprayer. Doesn't matter where you get it. I'm sure I picked up this somewhere because it's just generic. Um, I'll, I'll find them on Amazon and attach them underneath. They usually come in a three pack and they're inexpensive. I have water in this one, just water. So as I need it when I'm grooming, I have it right out here with me. I also have some others there in the corner that you can't see that I have filled up with 70% alcohol now. And that's what they're saying is good for this, uh, this novel cor corona that's going around for people. So whenever I have equipment and stuff, I spray, 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 and then I leave it on. I just, I leave it wet on the surface and I walk out of the room. So that's a good hint with the sprayer for that with your alcohol. Combs. This is the Belgium comb from England. There's a company in England. And they, they, they make the Greyhound comb. So this is the real one. 
I, I bought this because it's orange and when I'm at dog shows and I have a dog in the hunting class I can do the whole blaze orange thing this one is not this one's made off by a knockoff company I have never in my life seen a difference between the two and to tell you the truth I groom with this one I never groom with this one because I like the length of the blade see how the length of the blade is shorter on this purple one than the orange one so that's just a difference in maybe what breed you're working on I don't think I have a preference but since this is the one that I use every day in my hand constantly I'm used to this one I prefer that to the deeper one I don't think it matters it just depends on what feels best in your hand and what you get used to angling when you're doing back combing or just using it as a regular comb again I have links for all of this we all know that Debbie loves her double duck curve shears it is the only scissor I own other than of course a little tiny foot shear and I use this around the delicate work maybe around the uh, the cropped ears of a schnauzer sometimes just just tiny little bits off of the foot of a springer so that's just your smaller shear that's but that's all I use it for this is the one I use for everything everything and like I've said before, when I hold it this direction, it's cutting that way. Then when I turn it around, it becomes a straight edge shear. See how that section now is a straight edge shear? Right. And when I do this, it's a round. So when I'm using it to go that direction, I'm probably using that part of the shear. When I turn it around to use it as a straight edge, I'm now going to use that part of the, that part of it. See any part I can use? because this part's shooting off that way so it kind of automatically adjusts depending on how you turn it and this is this is all I use and I have that linked below too double ducks and double ducks again there's been I don't know once or twice where a company didn't have a double duck so I went over and got somebody else's forget it in the trash can gone gone now these you can take to any really good sharpener and they will sharp these sharpen really really well and then you can keep keep using them and using them and using them until there's no blade left. You can probably see on this one, it's been sharpened so many times, there's hardly any blade left. So you can keep going until the sharpener guy says, uh, Deb, I can't save those. There's just not enough blade left on them. Then I throw them out and I start over. But you can keep, you can keep doing those forever, which is what I like. Pet groomers or dog show, dog show people, it doesn't matter. You've got to have these nice blanketing pins. You've got to towel the dogs you're working on if they have that kind of top coat. I towel Australian Shepherds after I get done blowing them out and brushing them in the tub so that when I put them in the crate with a fan on, they don't end up all fuzzy and curly. I towel every, I cat towel little uh, Cavalier Spring Span, the little Cavalier Spaniels that come in here. So yeah, have lots of these pins around. These are, these are a must. Back to the clippers. If you're using your clippers for any length of time, they can get hot. Especially me. If I'm out here grooming all day, they can get hot. And that's why I say whenever I'm giving lessons, to take that clipper head and put it up against your hand, just like you do the water in your bathtub, to see if it's hot. Now, I have so many blades, because I probably have three of each, that if a blade is hot, I will take it off and put a new blade on. But sometimes the blade just gets snarly. It just gets caught up, especially if, if I'm grooming dirty hair. Dirty hair. So I'm going to plug this baby in. So if you're going along with your nine blade and suddenly it just isn't clipping anymore, just take the clipper cool. Now, you might have even heard that. It was going a certain speed, and then, then as soon as I put the clipper cool on it, it started going faster. It needed a little lubrication. So the clipper cool, oh, now when I put it up here, that blade's actually cold to my hand. Made it cold. And it lubricates it. So it's very, very good to have this around all day and just, not constantly, but just here and there. This is also not oily. So after spraying it, I could go directly back to the dog and not leave an oily residue. Some do. You certainly don't want to use WD-40 or you'll be in the bathtub for like 10 hours. 
trying to scrub that stuff out with Dawn or something. So, there you go. Well, while well, I have this, I don't know about this microphone. Let's go back to this. And you can see, I keep it in here because this stuff does get nasty. Now this stuff is super oily. So you want to use this at the end of the day. So I, I can't, I don't know. Let me see if I can do it this way. All right, so I'm just, the clipper's on and I'm just taking it to where the blade can go in and out across that. I am not dunking the whole thing in there. No, 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 no. Obviously that's not good for the clipper or any of the mechanics of the clipper, okay? I am just putting in, I'm just putting in that section right there, just across the teeth. That's it. And then, yes, it is very oily. So at that point, I would take that blade off and i put on a paper towel. I'd take the next blade that I used that day, I would put it on and I would do the same thing just that little tip and I would I would put it on and let it run just the tip and then I would take that out put that on a paper towel and then when I came back to use them I would have to wipe them down and I might even take my clipper cool and wipe them down because this stuff is oily and stays oily but it's going to help rusting it's going to help keep the edge so your blade, blade will last much much longer so that is a good way to take care of your equipment. So I will put that lid back on later, I hope, so it doesn't pour all over the place. And also, right after that, you're going to want to run and wash your hands. Like I said, that stuff is nasty. So that was very important. I wanted to show everybody that little lip and how you get that to come up on the Andes after a whole way up got to be the whole way up and then the blade slides on and then the blade gets locked into place so that was important the wah now if you have one of these heads and you can't get it to go on then there's something wrong with the head it's time to take it off and go take it to your tool master whoever does your tool work because if it doesn't go on then it doesn't work there's something springy about it that's just wrong or or these inside pieces if you've dropped your equipment, it could be missing some inside pieces. So either way, either way, it's time to take them to the clipper doctor, whoever your tool man is. If you've got to struggle with your equipment, call me. I did, he had a brand new set of Andy's clippers and I didn't want him digging at it because he got a kitchen fork and a knife out and I went, no, stop, stop, stop. I will get dressed. I will walk, walk out to the grooming shop and we'll FaceTime each other and I'll show you what to do. And that's when I said, ah, I should probably just do this for everybody. Ear wrap, we've already talked about that, most obviously for the show people. I always buy this because it's cheaper, the bigger size. And when I get to the dog show, I cut it in half. Make sure you always have a cheap dollar store scissor. Don't ever use your real scissors for this. There's gumminess on here and it's going to ruin the blade of your scissors. So I always have these. Whenever that, whenever that, whenever that. Bristle brush, comb, slicker brush, on a springer. Well, I used to show tons of old English sheepdogs and poodles. And for those two breeds, I needed the big round pin brushes. That's it. Since I no longer groom, groom those breeds for showing, I don't even own that anymore. There isn't a breed in the world that I would need it for. I use my slickers for everything. For everything, everything, everything. I've already told you guys about the colloidal silver, and it has to be the right percentage for the eyes only. I will list that under here, telling you the eye dilution. Uh, maybe I can even give you a link to Judith Shoemaker, who makes sure that it's done properly, and it's pharmaceutical, and it's sterile. I just keep it in my pantry up at the house. Don't refrigerate it. And if you can put it up to the light and see that it's clear, and that there's no particles in it, it's good. It is a gold color. So I just I have this for my tack box and for down here. I just put it like regular drops in their eyes. So 
I just have that and I use it every day. Okay, what else haven't I gone over? Of course, for the show people, you are going to want a medium with towel. I would say that has rough on both sides. Don't get one that's flat and shiny or rough. If you have that, you're going to want the rough side up against the dog's hair. The shiny won't absorb and it's going to leave a lousy, lousy top coat. One thing that is an absolute must when you're grooming at home are these fatigue mats. Okay, they're good for you, but here's the better reason to have them. If you have them the whole way around your table and the dog bumps your clipper or blump bumps a scissor or a blade off the table, or you do, it's going to fall on this and it won't bust. A clipper from your table to the floor can bust to where you might even have to buy a new one or you've got an $80 repair. And if you don't have backup clippers, what are you going to do? You're kind of screwed. So the fatigue mats, I generally have. Yes, I like to use them under my feet, but really I have them there to protect my equipment. It's not very often that my stuff falls on the floor, but it still happens. It happens to everybody. So that is a must, are your fatigue mats. Now let's go over here. See what I got over here. I got some stuff on this side. I got stuff all over the place. Okay, now, we talked about this. You might even need this at home. I mean, I don't know, right, what you're plugging into or what your setup is at home. I'm going to pull you guys back so that you can see things better. There you go. That's better. So. I don't know where you're, wh how you have yourself set up at home. Uh, my one guy does it on his porch. He doesn't have electric on his porch. So just get one of these, and it's so easy to keep. It's 25 foot, winds up, has your three prongs. Convenient, super cool. These are a must. Dryers, just your standard everyday dryer. Go to Sally's, find something that works. The most important thing is to buy a model that you can do this with. A lot of them you can't, and I've already shown you on my grooming tapes, especially for show people and pet people. There's going to be times when you're going to have to have both hands picking up a foot or holding an ear and blowing it out. So whatever dryer you get, you have to make sure you can do that with it. That would be the only... And that it adjusts all the threes. Uh, I showed you about the quick stop and the ears and that and that. These are wonderful. Don't, I mean, just use these. All you have to do is stand there, put it on the ground, take your little broom, and all the hair goes into there, and you're not killing yourself and breaking yourself, breaking your back all day long, especially when I have five dogs in here. Just goes in the trash can. These are great. I got this at the five and under store. You know, great, great, great. So, you go to dog shows, and a lot of people see these. A lot of people, it's called the stand up dryer. This is not something I don't think pet owners ever going to need for a Springer Spaniel. Um, if you have something with a furry undercoat like a German Shepherd or some wood, you wouldn't use this anyway. You'd use those big blasters like I have back by my bathtub that just blow room temperature air in, in through the dog's coat to the skin to separate it. So, but a lot of people dog shows like these if they're working on more than, more than two dogs. This way, you can blow on the dog and always have two hands free. And you don't have to do that neck crunchy thing. So, there's a good place for this. It's just too big and bulky for me to travel to dog shows with anymore. I used to all the time. I just, um, I'm too old, too tired to be loading up my van with a whole bunch of extra equipment that I don't necessarily need and that I can live without. So see, it took me longer to set up for this portion than it is to actually run it, I'm sure. So I had to run around and get all my stuff out. If you're grooming at home, it is super, super nice to have. Come up. All right, to have what's called a slip lead. That's all this is, it's a slip lead. So when you're getting your dog ready for grooming or to the bathtub, you just, just simply put this around and you can walk your dog around in a slip lead. They're always nice to have. 
and again you can get them in rainbow colors and all sorts of gizmos and gasmos so those are nice we use those in the field all the time we, we you technically shouldn't be running your dog in the field or a hunt test with a collar on so the best way to get it up to the line is with a slip lead and you take it off and you stick it in your pocket a must another dollar and under store you've got lots of hair on your table don't don't take your slicker brush to clean off your table just don't do it uh, you're gonna you're gonna bust the bristles on the slicker brushes they do cost a little bit and you don't want to be constantly replacing your equipment there's no reason to so I have about three of these floating around because I, I lose them all the time there they're like the spare socks I don't know where they go the gremlins take them so I use this all day long to take the hair off my table and this is for the single dog owner too you don't want to put your hand here there's a thing called barber's hair where you can get hair in between your fingers and down in and for ladies okay you, that dog hair can work its way all through your clothes and in, in, into very private personal areas this is another reason why I strongly recommend this material you've got to be wary this material when you're grooming a dog I don't care if it's at home I don't care if it's a dog show this resists all dog hair and I haven't I use this when I'm filming so I haven't washed it in three months because I'm, I'm really not doing work out here when I'm doing this but it resists dirt and it resists dog hair so dog hair can't get anything so when you have loose hair on the table don't be wiping your table off with your with your hands the worst thing you can do just go ahead and get get some of these that's a nice thing to have treats after the dog is done then it's mommy mommy ootsie ootsie kissy kissy oh time to go home or just time to get off the grooming table and go back to the couch so I'm gonna link you to my favorite treats they are both organic they are both grain free and my dogs go wackadoodle crap crazy over them this is a peanut one I don't have a whole one a peanut one that I get from members mark and it's totally grain free I get it smells like peanut butter my dogs go crazy over it it's kind of like a milk bone without but without all the garbage crap that milk bones made out of so this is a wonderful product this is made by triumph and they say it's a jerky but it's really not it's flat it's dry this is what I use in the ring now because I can put it in my armband and put it down my little bra on the front put it in my mouth it doesn't taste like yucky baked liver right and the dogs love it and it's an instant satisfaction thing because it breaks off when it's fresh as a little stale it, it's flexible and it breaks off in little tiny pieces so it's easy but all my pets here in the shop after I'm done grooming them they all go in their crate and they turn around and they're looking for their little treat so that's a must even with your own then to keep your equipment organized again if you're going to travel with your equipment and I do have two or three videos on this and that's your traveling tack box what to do what to keep in it but if you're at home and you just want to keep all your equipment together of course just go get a nice toolbox so you can have everything nice and orderly even if you're just a single dog owner I mean look how nice this is you put your clippers under here your bigger brushes on top you can have all your blades on one side and you can have your scissors and this is really all you would need you could have small things up here this is even room up here to put cl clipper blades this is all you would need at home and this is all you would need I've taken 10 dogs to a specialty and worked out of this tack box so right so what else is there I think that's it my main thing was to show you about the clippers and how the heads come on and off oh here I do have it out lucky you guys okay so even if you are a single dog owner this is a must sorry but it is and that is the grooming table and I would recommend portable and you can buy them as a set there is the grooming arm for Springer get four foot this is a three foot and it's not big enough for the Springer I use this one 
at the bathtub for all my small dogs that I have to hand dry with the blower. So the three foot clamp, the uh, three foot arm is okay. But for Springer's and other breeds, you want the 48 inch. So that's a clue on that. And then your grooming table comes in all shapes, all shapes, all sizes. This one happens to be a cute little dog bone. I have some people swear by these because when the dog's there, okay, it's a dog bone, yes, but it actually serves a practical purpose because when the dog's up here, you can bring your body that much closer to the work you're doing and you're not stuck way out here. So this really does give you a nice surface to walk in on so that you can get up under your dog and work on it better. This particular table is extremely heavy and very, very sturdy. So in that regard, it was a good thing. You can see, I mean, every table in the world is made like that. That's all it does. I would strongly recommend, and you can see the tape, that after you do this, if you're going to put it up and leave it up, get duct tape and put duct tape here and put duct tape here and here. Because just the constant motion of perhaps your dog going on and off, on and off, on and off of this table is enough at times to make these legs bend and fold. Pet groomers, it's a must that you do that with duct tape because if you get a rowdy pet and it falls off the table and takes the table with it, you'll want to make sure that the whole thing doesn't collapse on the dog. Then on these clamps, I always put them on the off show side of the judge. The judge judges a dog by its right side, no, by its left side. So I always put my clamp over here is the show side of the dog. And really, they're all made a little bit different, but they're all made in such a way that you simply twist them and they come on and off. Get it on there good and sturdy now. And then to adjust the height, Okay, then to adjust the height, they all have this bar here. So if you're working on a chihuahua, right? Or you're working on the next breed up. So that's how you do that. And if you want to take take the whole thing down, tuck it away, put it in your van, and go to the dog show, you can. Because it's all portable. Or if you just want to leave it up at home permanently, you can. But for sure, make sure that you tape these edges. I always have those taped. I think that's it for equipment today. Like I said, my main thing was that I really wanted to go over the clippers with everybody, which I deliberately put on the floor so that they wouldn't fall off. There's two more tricks that I'm going to show you while I got your attention. Okay, so Debbie doesn't want me to leave the clipper on the table with the dog, then what do I do with it? This is called a dry sink. Here's another one of these Pennsylvania Dutch things. And it's actually a sink. It's called a dry sink. So I'm grooming, I put this here, down in this dry sink. If I come by and do this, those clippers are not going anywhere. They are stuck in this. It's so a dry sink. This is the best top. I got this at, like, an antique store, quote unquote, but I don't think it cost me more than fifty, sixty dollars. So this is a Pennsylvania Dutch dry sink. It's dry. There's no water. You put your clippers in here. All your equipment. It cannot fall out. Even if I come by and walk on this cord, these clippers are snug in there. How cool! Right here's my grooming table. Right. So I'll bring this up and give you a nice little bird's eye view. So you can see. It's actually a sink. It's probably a dry sink, and that is exactly what it is. Dry sink. And then you have ledges for all your other stuff. But here are the clippers. See how they're in there? Nothing's going to make them come out. Same thing with the hair dryer. Look. If I can make the hair dryer go in the frame. There. Again, but the best place for a hair dryer is where I have it up here. I'll tell you, 
Those fall on the floor, you're out 30, 40 bucks. Those are plastic. Those fall on the floor. They are dead. They are gone forever. So you don't want your hair dryers. The second base place for your hair dryers and for your clippers is on the floor. If you're steady working on a dog, just take your clipper off the table and just put it on the floor, especially if you have a fatigue mat. Same thing with the dryer. You're working the dryer. If you don't have a towel box at the, grooming shop, at the dog show to put it on, put it on the floor. It's going to end up there. If you were the dog, knock it over. At least this way, it's safe, it's sound, and it can't get smashed up and hurt. So I think we're good for today. If anybody has any questions about any of the equipment, how to use it, how to put the heads on and off, how to use the waz, how to take care of your blades after you've used them, just send me a note, let me know, and I will be here. This just generated from a phone call this morning. I thought the best thing to do was to come out here and show everybody. Show everybody. So it is definitely, definitely the time of day where the coffee has worn off. And I can go get a glass of wine. As a matter of fact, Neil's coming over with Carson. We're going to give him a bath, work on him tonight. And Neil was nice enough to get me one of those box wines. So that's sitting up in my refrigerator from two days ago. And I am definitely going to go have a glass of wine. And that's it for today. Thanks for everybody for joining me. And again, this is Dog Tricks of the Trade. And I'm Deb Kirk. And I want to thank everybody for joining me. And this is our equipment. This is what to do with your equipment and how to use it and where to put it and what to do. And there it is on the ground. So that's what to do. So thank you for joining me. And I'll see you in the next segment. Bye-bye.